Hello and welcome back to Bug Rounds. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now today, we look at the care and husbandry and factual information about the Tissamenus serratorius. So the animal you see in front of you is the Tissamenus serratorius. They don't hold a common name and the specimen you're looking at is an adult female. Those that wish to look these up, their phasmid study group number or PSG number is 314. The food plants these often eat are bramble, pyrocanther, hypericum and potentially some others that we're just not so sure about yet. Testing out certain food plants on your phasmids is fine but just bear in mind the certain plants can contain certain toxins. As far as we can tell, these are a purely sexual culture, meaning there is no parthenogenesis, so they do require a male to lay fertilised over. An adult female of these species only really reaches 6 centimetres, which makes them under the category of small phasmid. So you don't need a very large container for them. In fact, you don't really need anything over 18 centimetres tall. Now, as you can see, they have a beautiful pattern along their back. Now this is only really shown in females, and as you can tell, there is no wing or wing cases here. So females do not fly. And again in this species, just like the Sungaya, males don't fly either. Shall we have a look at a male? Here's one for you, crawling over some wilted flowers. I would also like to point out that a lot of my phasmids are going to be showing on certain house plants. These aren't necessarily food plants for the phasmids. It's just for show in these videos. But this male is only around 4.5 centimetres in length. It's not uncommon for males to be smaller than females in the stick insect world. You can see that he has some slight thorns coming off of his body and abdomen. The female does have them too. And although they're thicker, they're a little less pronounced compared to the size of the male. Now in this shot, I've actually placed the male upon the female's back so you can see a full size comparison. But it is not uncommon for males to stay upon the back of females for long periods of time, sometimes even weeks. This is a sort of statement that this female is mine, other males back off. This is the girl I'm mating with to have my offspring. Now these beauties come from the Philippines mostly, but you can also find them in surrounding areas. They were first actually discovered in 1875 by Stahl, if I've pronounced that correctly. But they were first collected and actually brought into culture by Joshim Bressel. Again, I may have pronounced that wrong. And that was at a much, much later date. Unfortunately, I have no ova or eggs to show you of this species. They are around, they've been mating for a while, but I just can't find them inside their enclosure. However, what I'll do for you now is put a picture of that ova up from the Phasmid study group so you can find yours. Ova of these only really take three to four months to hatch, and nymphs come out at around 16 millimetres, and they tend to stick to light browns. I love the coloration on our adult female here. I can't fully bring the colors up to you guys on this camera, but there are beiges, browns, greys, blacks, and even almost burgundy colors. I love how her legs are darker to the rest of her body. And even the male, although his colors much less pronounced, are still beautiful. One thing of importance when keeping this species is humidity levels. They like it humid all the time. Now I don't ever suggest spraying the insects. I give the leaves a light mist, but most of the humidity comes from the soil based substrate I keep these on. Hence why it was so hard for me to try and find any over for you. In the wild, these are found near the forest floor and they forage from low level leaves. They're not often found high up in the trees like many other phasmids. This is an indication 
that this species requires some hides. I put in various pieces of bark for these guys to hide under, and you'll often find them there. They live much more terrestrial style than many other phasmids. What's interesting about these, especially in females, is they tend to have spiky parts and almost warty parts too. You normally have one or the other, and the way they keep their antenna very close together. It reminds me of another species that we will feature here on the channel, but you haven't seen yet. And you can even make out the stick insect's eye in this image. Do you see the shape of that abdomen? That's a great indicator that they will bury their ova. Now I don't actually know this for a fact, as I've not witnessed them do it, nor could I find much information on how they lay. However, that sort of hammer and lower ovipositor part is normally an indication that they dig into the soil. And being a humid species, it's always best to give them that damp soil to lay into. I would even recommend adding some moss to keep up these humidity levels. Now, although a lot of keepers say these guys are easy, I would mark them a 4 out of 10. A sort of beginner slash mid-range species, purely because of their need for humidity, is much higher than the Sungaya that we previously shown. Now, I actually lost quite a few nymphs of these when I first gained them, and I believe this was due to humidity levels, especially as nymphs tend to need more humidity than adults. But once I mastered that, I had no issues raising my remaining ones. So that's why they're not put intermediate and more beginner slash mid-range. Now unfortunately I'm not going to show you the enclosure of these guys like I did with the Sungaya. And that's because they're actually cohabiting with another species you haven't seen on this channel yet. Cohabitation is not really recommended, especially in beginners. However, once you have learnt location and specific needs of these phasmids, you can work out which ones are okay living among each other safely and happily. But what I can tell you is about their enclosure. Mine has seven centimeter deep substrate, more for the need of the others that are living in there. It has cork bark hides, three of them to be exact, and it has its pot always topped up with bramble. The soil, as I've said a few times in this video, is kept moist at all times, and they have a background in their enclosure too, with some cracks in it for places to hide. But this particular species, as said before, tends to stick near the floor and by the cork bark hides. They are nocturnal, and to be honest, I only ever see them out at night time. I've never seen them emerge for food in the day, and I don't even know which hide they're hiding under most of the time. If you choose to own these cheeky chappies, one thing to bear in mind is to always keep an eye on the leaf litter you throw out because if they've got dry and curled, these guys might be hiding inside, especially as young nymphs. A small spaphasmid like this and having 16 millimeter length nymphs, they can hide almost anywhere and you'll certainly be chucking them out with old pieces of bramble. So you have to be really, really thorough before you do a clean out with these guys. Now, as the video comes to an end, I'd like to get some comments from you folks. I want you to let me know if you've ever heard of this species. Although they have been in the hobby for a quite a long time, they're rarely owned by keepers, especially in the UK, and tend to have a slightly higher price range because of this. They have a pretty high success rate in nymphs, which normally means they're cheaper. But as a lot of breeders don't own them, there's not as many in circulation. Perhaps that's why they have that ever so slightly higher price range. So again, please let me know in the comments below if you'd ever heard of this species. Also, let me know if you want to own them. And which is your favourite so far? These or the Sungaya featured in the previous Phasmid Files video? Give this video a thumbs up if you like it too guys, because it really does help me out to have all kinds of engagement. And if you feel this video might help out a friend, please share it across social media platforms. And if you guys want to see what else dwells within the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. For those of you that didn't realise, I upload normally every Wednesday and Sunday, and I'm trying to be a more engaging channel, meaning there will also be more live streams coming your way. Is this Phasmid content something that you've been enjoying? 
because I really need your feedback guys. It'll help me decide the future of this channel. So all that's left to say is thanks for watching ladies and gentlemen and I'll see you next time here at Bug Realms. Goodbye from me, goodbye from these guys. Take care everyone, bye bye.